very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program. A nice show tonight, eh, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. We're going, we're going away right afterward, aren't we? Swinging. We're going on a little trip. Yeah. Paul and I are going to California for the weekend. Swinging out Big there. excitement. Uh, my next guest, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my first guest, actually, is a, an actor, a patron of the arts, a man of fine taste, and I understand moments ago backstage, he goosed one of our staff members. <laughs> he will be appearing this Sunday at Lincoln Center in an homage to Stravinsky. Please welcome Mr. Tony Randall. Always nice to see you. It's a very nice sport jacket. Thank you. Now, is it true? Did you did you actually sneak up behind somebody backstage? Yes, I did. Now, why did who was it and why did you do it? Well, don't mention. I don't the name. know her name. Yeah, but why did you do it? It was there. Uh. <laughs> I didn't goose. I pinch. Oh, I see. What would be the difference? When you pinch, you use two fingers and you gather some flesh. <laughs> yeah. And, and and what about the other? You use only one finger. And. And the rest is history. As <laughs> It's uh, well. I didn't. I didn't realize there was that big a difference. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now, now, how did the how did the person react? I'm I'm sure she slapped you silly. She asked me to marry her. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Of course she did. <laughs> was she uh, was she embarrassed? Was she surprised? No. She turned and faced me with her mazupas and uh, <laughs> and <laughs> dared me to proceed. Oh, good lord! Really? Yes. Well, maybe I should have the name yes. of this person then. Yes. Uh, now, last time you were here, you were mm -hmm. pushing this wine, this like $4 a bottle of wine that mm. just, you just got in a crate of it off the dock mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and tonight, I understand you're here to plug something else. You did it already. Well, let's get it out of the way. Let's yeah. just be upfront about it and take care of it. Sure. Uh, Sunday night, I'm appearing uh, in the Noel Stravinsky program, as you said, at Tully Hall up at the Lincoln Center, mm -hmm. 65th and Broadway. Mm -hmm. What will be the nature of the presentation? Well, it'll be all Stravinsky in my part of it. Uh, he wrote a work for orchestra and actors called mm. L'Histoire du Soldat, mm. the soldier's story. The soldier's story. And uh, I played the devil in it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Do you have a little devil suit that you wear? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a real actor doesn't need artificial... Uh, Accoutrements. Any uh, aids to the uh, imagination. Uh -huh. he, can, he can make an audience think anything he wants to think. So what will you be wearing in your part as the devil? I have this red suit with horns <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and will you? <laughs> and will you? Will you be running through this auditorium filled with classical music buffs goosing people or pinching people? Any chance I get? Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Well, I think it's a felony, isn't it? You can't no, just assault no. somebody like that. No, no, it's not a felony. Okay, now are you? You must be a big Stravinsky fan, then, are you? Yes. Yeah, yes. He's, he's not a he's not a composer I love. Uh -huh. wh whom I uh... who is a composer you love? Wagner? No, I don't love Wagner. Beethoven? Yes, above uh -huh. all. Uh -huh. Yes, Bach. Uh -huh. Verdi. How about uh, uh, Sibelius? No, pardon. No, no. I, he's not someone I love and think of all the time. Uh -huh. I think of. <laughs> well, it's true. Certain composers I think of all day long, every day. Uh -huh. Like who? Verdi, mainly. Oh, Verdi. His music's always running in my head. Mm -hmm. At any time, I could stop the tape and tell you where I am. Yeah. You, so yeah. you're a pretty well-versed student of his work? Not a student at all, just a fan. Uh -huh. Just a yeah. fan. And do you like all kinds of music? Do you like popular music, contemporary music, rock and roll? I don't like rock very much, no. Why, no, why is that? It's, uh, it's too simple. It's monotonous. It's uh, three or four chords. Uh, same level of loudness always. Mm -hmm. It's never soft, mm -hmm. never louder. <laughs> But there, it, it has no variation. Yeah, but there, there must be there must be some of it that you. <laughs> uh, there must be some of it that you enjoy. I mean, you must have heard something occasionally that strikes your fancy. Never once. Oh no, that is that true? True. Now, what about the Beatles? What about Elvis Presley? No. What about Dee Snyder? Never heard of. Him. <laughs> w would I like Dee Snyder? Well, you, I think you probably would. Yeah, because yeah, I think you might. I think there's a good chance that you would. No, don't think so. Um, what about television? Do you watch a lot of television? I don't really watch television at all. Now, why is that? There's nothing to watch. The only thing I watch is uh, commercials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tune out the program and then I turn it on quickly to get the commercial to get, because they're the best thing on television. You think so? Oh, they're the only de decently done things. Can you, yeah. Can you give us an example? 
No, it's hard to find anything to give you an example about, but I, uh... Well, I'm glad you brought it up. I, uh... <laughs> I feel that you can study commercials and learn about trends. Well, that's, that's absolutely true. And because I, the commercials start the trends, yeah. or, or vice versa. And Which now is there, it? there's a trend now, and I think it's unmistakable in commercials, towards tears. Making people cry. No, they cry yeah. in the commercials. Oh, I see, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out the meaning of this trend. I think it all began with the tele, lo, those long-distance telephone commercials. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Where people say goodbye to each other, and they cry. The actors cry in them, and... <laughs> They call each other up. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And the, the saddest one was the one that said, you know, I love you, Mama. Remember that one? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, but now there's one where this sergeant is saying goodbye to his swell German buddies uh -huh. over in Germany. And the other, the German fellow says, not for first fault, don't we? We're not you, Mama. And <laughs> not for first fault, don't and I don't know what those guys... I don't like anything about their relationship. Uh -huh. But anyway... <laughs> as soon as he gets to America, he calls them up. Uh -huh. Well... Yeah. And they're all there together waiting for his call. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> but then there, there's one uh, where a, it starts with a girl. She has very beautiful eyes. And she's looking like this. And she's, she's crying. It's a wine commercial. Oh. Yeah. And the fellow says... Didn't a man ever tell you he loved you before? Yeah, yeah. And more tears well up all the way. <laughs> and she says, never the right one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think she's crying because he's bought her such a cheap wine. Uh -huh. <laughs> if he loves her, why didn't he buy her champagne? Yeah. Or, or perhaps he's not the right one either. That's what I think. Yeah, just a long line of losers in this yeah. woman's life. She just found out yeah. that he's the yeah. wrong one because he didn't buy champagne. Okay. The, we, no, no, I, I got another one. Oh, no, well, we, have to do, we have to do one now. We have to do a commercial. We have to do a commercial, and then we'll come back and you'll talk more about it. All right. All right? Yeah. It'll be all right. Don't worry. We'll be right back here with Tony Randall. <laughs> back to the uh, program. Tony Randall is here, and you were, uh, we interrupted you in a flow. You had something, uh, a stream of consciousness there you wanted to conclude. Yeah, but it, it, it's ruined now. I lost the... No, I you were talking about commercials, <laughs> and, you, and you just described the one where the woman's yeah. so sobbing about the yeah, deep wine. The, the, the worst one of all is um, this child who wants to meet Mickey Mouse. Yeah. 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 Now, see, these people obviously yeah, they, like uh, that. There's this child with bleach blonde hair. And... <laughs> And she's crying in the beginning of the commercial. And she says, I guess I'll never meet Mickey. And then she goes... <laughs> <laughs> Even, you know the one I'm talking yeah. about? And then her father says, I'm sorry, honey. We just don't have the money or something like that. And then he comes in and says, it's okay, we're going. And they all go mm -hmm. and everything. So you wonder what happened between the moment when he... Uh, realized he was dead broke yeah and 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 he got the money and they went well you know what happened i think i know what happened um <laughs> i think his wife took him aside uh -huh. and said what do you mean we don't have the money sure. what am i gonna tell that kid yeah she wants to meet mickey <laughs> <clears throat> and he said i'm sorry honey we just can't cut it. I don't have it. Right. Besides which, if I had it, I wouldn't blow it on just meeting Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, what are you? I thought you were an American. Yeah. Are you one of these pinko liberals? <laughs> he says, no, no, don't say that. Honestly, never. I'll get the money somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and he embezzles it from his place of business. <laughs> Gee. And then they all go to Disneyland and they meet Mickey and everybody's happy. Yeah, except that's, he gets caught. No, no, <laughs> that's the end. Everybody's happy. He gets away with it. And no, 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 he, no. He, he does time in a federal prison. <laughs> that's what happens. Oh. <laughs> 
And there he meets a very high-class type of guy who yeah. serves at the highest levels of government, right. and he uses that in to get a newspaper column. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, yeah why and, not? And, and then what happens? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I know what happens. Extreme loyal people, extremely loyal to the government, right. begin to leak the truth to him about little things. Uh -huh. And he becomes a national hero. Yeah, except that they insist that he take a drug, uh, uh, I mean, a lie detector right, test. Right, right. And they find drugs in his, um, in his eye drops. <laughs> well, this is all very interesting, uh, Mr. Randall. Now we're going to show you some ink blots that we have here on file. And we'll see what you can make of those, if you will. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of a kid were you? Did you ever have any demands or cravings that you uh, imparted to your parents like that? I must do this. What kind of a kid were you? You were probably just nuts, weren't you? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, yeah, did you come from a big family of brothers and sisters, a lot of them? I don't remember. <laughs> 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 you don't remember if you had brothers or sisters? No, there, there I remember some, some kids being around. I just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you get cards at the holidays from uh, signed your sister, your brother? Um, they, they, they're, people used to leave little presents uh, on my bed and under uh -huh. my bed and, and hope that I would uh, talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I, uh, I went my own way. I, uh, at, I, at what age did you go your own way? About Very, 12. About 12. Yeah. Sort of left them behind. Yeah, I really uh, did, actually. Yeah. Do you have fond memories of those uh, days before you uh, sort of... Uh... To be truthful, I had a marvelous childhood. Yeah. I can't imagine having a happier one. Well, I and, bet you uh, were beaten up a lot, though, weren't you? Yes, I was. Really? Uh, <laughs> virtually every day of my life. No. <laughs> Some uh, neighborhood toughs or bullies would swat you and so forth? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you would probably provoke it, too, wouldn't you? No, I tried to avoid them, yeah. and I tried to ignore them, but they'd hit me anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, were, were you pretty good with your mitts? No. Yeah. And still am not. Yeah. I've never uh, struck another human being. Um. Yeah, but you've goosed, except, you've goosed except, plenty of them, yeah. haven't you? I, I once almost hit a man in the opera. Uh-huh. Uh, he was probably a boor, wasn't he? Talking no, and being no, he allowed? was conducting in front of me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he sat there conducting. He was uh, Joan Sutherland and Lucia de Lammermoor. morning. He conducted incessantly, and his hands always in my way. And uh, came the big scene, the mad scene, the best scene in the opera. And yeah. uh, that is my favorite. He, he, <laughs> he continued conducting. I suddenly grabbed his shoulders. And I said, Stop that! I, I grabbed his shoulders hard enough to break them both. Uh -huh. And I've since seen him many times at the opera. Yeah. And he always looks at me. Well, sure. <laughs> You're going to hit me again. Yeah. But he was upsetting you and probably others around you. Everyone thanked me. Uh, I don't yeah. blame them. All right. Uh, all right, if you want to go see this deal for, uh, it's an homage to Stravinsky. Yes. It's not a deal, it's an homage it's to an homage. Stravinsky. Yeah. And it'll be a, a very nice, classy, uh, well-executed performance, won't it? Oh, yes, conducted yeah. by Robert Kraft. Yeah, and you'll be in your little red suit with the horns. That's right. right. That's where you'll know me. Tony, nice to see you again. Thank you, David. Good luck, sir. Thanks for being here. We have to pause for uh, station identification. We'll be right back. <laughs>